right, welcome back. Um, what I'd like to do next is lighten up the hair a little bit. All right, and the color that I picked for that is uh, that's too close. There we go. Bosch Chestnut from uh, Scale Color. Okay. It's from their fantasy game line. So I just want to lighten it up a little bit. And I'm going to dry brush it. Okay. Been hours since the last time I recorded, so I was a little busy and stuff. Okay, um, that's the color right there. So I'm using that palette again just to get rid of the excess paint. This is a paint is a little more runny. It's not as thick. So, I do want to lighten it up a little bit, and I'm going to go nice and gently, okay, just in certain areas, in the high points, just to give it a little bit more variation on the hair. And I want to put some of that brown in the eyes. I know the eyes look a little, little crooked or a little wacky, but I'll fix that as I add in um, the white.
guys watch my channel, you guys know that I like to use this, the transfers for eyes. I use the Archer transfers. But these were... I mean, you can use it on this one too, but... Eyes were already lined up. Just type it in. So... I figure, you know, what the heck. Let me show you how I, guys, how I do eyes. Just this one's gonna be real simple to do. You know, eyes is not easy to do, guys. I'm not gonna be totally honest with you. You see how I'm turning a kid around? Do it upside down. All right? You can turn it the other way, sideways, whichever way is easier for you to reach those corners and those spots that you need to put paint. Next, I'm going to paint the lips. And the color that I'm using is this natural lip. Okay, color by Createx from their bloodline. It's Tim Gore's bloodline. Okay. Then you can mix your own paint color if you want, you know, stuff like that. I have it right here to go. Sometimes even after that, put a little bit of red. Um, I'll go in with a little bit of um, like a red tone or something, just to darken it up if I have to. After I put this on, and I'll do like a little glazing. One thing that I wanted to touch with you guys real quick before I finish this is a little tip. Okay, now, one of the things that I like to do, well, not that I like to do, I gotta go four flights of stairs to go see all this outside. But the good thing about doing that during the day is you go outside and you're gonna get, you know, light can change the way you see the paint, the way that you lay it down. It might look different under different, different sources of light. Under your LEDs, a soft bulb, you know, fluorescent, and natural light. It's always going to look a little bit different. So it's always good to look at a kit, not just underneath the same source of light that you use. And I got four different lights going on in here. And I can change the, the different tones and see how different the kit might look with these different tones and I can do the same thing with these other lights that I got back here. Alright, let me push this one up a little bit. You can see how it's changing the... Okay. The source of the light. So when I go outside and I look at it, also I'm getting a different look from how the kit looks and on the different sources of light. And you know, natural light is always better, they say. So, if you're happy the way it looks under different sources of light, then you're good. Um, somebody was telling me a story, real quick. That some guy was painting this kid under fluorescent light. And he was doing it for a show or for 
be for a commission kit. I don't know. I don't remember what it was exactly, but what ended up happening is the kit looked like shit after he presented or gave the kit in or whatever. And the reason why is because he painted underneath the fluorescent light. And when it came out into using the natural light or to a different light, like the kit looked. It, it wasn't like if the job wasn't done right or you know he didn't do a good try to do a good job at it. It just didn't look right because of the colors. The colors didn't look like underneath that, uh, underneath other sources of light. And the guy felt devastated because you know he, you know, he, the dude put a lot of work into it, and uh, and unfortunately the kit didn't come out looking right because it was done underneath the fluorescent light and it kind of threw off the colors for him. You know, and maybe it's also how you interpret the colors underneath the light. You know, has to do a lot with it. See, like I keep on telling you guys, also here is to pay attention to this for colors. Here, you know, little camera that you're looking at right now is more for so you don't miss out to see the, what I'm doing. All right, so that's why because a lot of times I pull, they get too close to me or whatever, and I can always angle this a little bit differently. Okay, so, okay, so, I would tell you to keep on looking at this one because this one's giving you the true color of what I'm seeing, okay, or at least close to it. All right, so, whatever you're painting, check your painting under different sources of light, okay, and if you go and seal it outside like I do, then you're going to get a also, or if you have a window, you're also going to have a good look at your kit from a different source, you know, and then you're going to be able to tell what kind of adjustments you need to make. Like sometimes I tell you guys, oh, I need to come over and do a little bit more highlight, or I need to add some more this or that. It's because I went outside, I sealed it, and I'm looking at it in a different source of light, and it kind of tells me, well, which way should I go with it? Okay, just a little tip. do is I'm gonna go seal the eyes and the lips and stuff and then I'm gonna come back and put the pink in the inside the eyes okay all right so let's hit the corner of the eyes all right and, uh, I grab that's really long thin liner brush for this Uh, 
on the bottom eyelid okay, of his face and the inside of it. That's why you seal, guys. So I do this. There we go. Okay. Same thing on the other. Not too much paint. shot with the black I can tell right here so I'm gonna touch this up right here. see this because it's very hard for me to, to do it on camera. I'm hoping you guys can see it. It's not easy to do on camera. I like to have this stuff done like close to my body usually. I'm going to fix that again. What I'm doing is I'm just wiping the excess. Okay. There we go. I'm going to fix that black again. Just a little bit of black right there on the bottom. There we go. That's it. So that's it for now, guys. Okay. There's the eyes. Okay. I just still have to put a little bit of glow in the eyes. And that's it. And then, you know, put a high gloss finish on the eyes. As far as that, most of the stuff is done. Okay. A little bit of more color in the lip. So what I'm going to do now, before I go to bed, is I'm going to seal the crap out of this. I'm going to give her like two coats of sealer. And the reason why is because tomorrow what I want to do is I'm, we're still not done yet. We still got to do the 5 o'clock shadow. Alright. And then we can move on to the clothing. Alright. So what I'm going to do is put like two coats, two heavy coats of sealer to give it a good protection because I'm going to be rubbing uh, the pigment or the pastel onto this and I want to make sure that I don't if I have to wash it off because maybe if I, if, let's say if I make a mistake and I go too heavy it's not going to do anything to the skin tone underneath it okay so I have to rub it off and get it off because don't forget that this is very textured and I don't want nothing to happen to that okay so tomorrow we'll continue with this but tonight I'm going to give it a nice two heavy coats of uh, the matte finish okay and tomorrow we'll continue with the 
with the five o'clock shadow and the hairs on his chest and stuff like that. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And I'll see you then. All right. Welcome back, everybody. So, um, uh, what are we gonna do today? Is still finish up uh, with Brad. <clears throat> excuse me. So, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, oh, let me show this on. Yes, yeah, it is. All right. So, what I want to do now is is where I left off yesterday. Is I put it two layers of the clear coat before I went to bed, and I wanted to dry uh, really good overnight uh, because I'm going to be doing some. Uh, we're going to be doing the 5 o'clock shadow and the hair on his chest, okay? And, you know, you're going to be rubbing and stuff, so I'm going to make sure that everything is protected just in case if I have to clean it up and we don't have to go back and, you know, damage any of the stuff that we already did, okay? So, the reference picture that I'm going to use is this. I have a couple of them up, but the main one that I'm looking at right now is that one, Okay. Just so you guys know what I'm looking at when I'm doing this. Alright. It's a random picture I picked up on the web and uh and this is the one that I uh that I kinda like the most where it captures his five o'clock shadow the best. Okay. And you kinda know where the hairline goes and everything else, okay? So that's what I'm looking at. Okay. So this way you guys have an idea exactly where I'm going with this, all right. So I got my pan pastel. This is a uh, Payne's Gray Extra Dark from Pan Pastels. Okay, this color that I'm using right here. Okay, so it's pretty dark. It's kind of like a bluish tint to it. Okay, and. What I'm gonna to try to use is try to use this really really soft brush that I have here. And the reason why I'm gonna use this one is because I wanna go very gently over this. Okay? I'm still gonna use my filbert brush. Okay. And I had some good results before. No, doesn't mean that I'm gonna have good results now. It's just I'm saying that this using this method right here, I have done very well. I used to use a gun gunmetal pigment by Mink for doing the firecon shot, but the problem with that one was is it's it was okay. And she had to be really really careful with that because it kind of like streaked a little bit if you weren't doing it correctly. It was really hard to use so. I found this method of using the pastels to be a little bit better and using this color actually works pretty good. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Alright, so I'm going to put some on here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe most of it away. What I want to do is get that much. Okay, you see the last touch that I used? Okay, so I'm going to make sure that that's what I'm going to be using. Alright, so here we go. So I'm going to stay within the size of the brow. Hold on a second. Alright. So we'll start here. Okay. And then just kind of work it in there. Okay, see how lightly I'm going? And if you have to do layers on that, we'll do layers, okay? But you don't want to overdo it. Now, Kai, uh, Sean had pretty much give you the outline of where uh, the hairline is, okay? For the most part. So if you want to follow that, go ahead. Because he has got a pretty good... If you take a really close look... You see it going right there, okay. So, okay. see how I take most of it out. And 
after you spray it, you might lose some of it, so you might have to go over it again. You can put your top coat, okay? Just so you know. What you're doing is you're dry brushing with the pastel, kind of. You're doing this very gently, and I'm using a very soft, this is a very, very soft brush. Okay, so, I'm not up pressing down on it either, I'm just doing it very gently, just getting rid of, because see, it has a ton in there, in the brush, it still has a bunch of light, but you don't want to go in there and rub it too hard, alright, you just want to do it just gently on top, alright, you want to keep the skin tone still visible, in a way, okay, if that makes any sense. Do yourself a favor too when you're done doing something like this you're gonna want to get rid of this okay get rid of this this I've been using this for the last three days while I've been painting okay but this stuff will get on your your hands on your kit just you know you don't want to do that okay. so once you're done get rid of this one put a new one down okay I like these these are just regular shop towels and they work great for this okay the paint and everything absorbs it. If you have to spill anything, boom, you can use this really quick. Really easy to use. Cheap. I pick these up at Home Depot. Right, I pick up a whole big box that you can pull one at a time. And they last me for a long time. I use them just about for everything. My 3D printing. To clean up that stuff. It's cheaper than using and buying paper towels. They absorb more and they're a lot better. Hope you guys can see that the difference. All right. You're gonna spray it. It might stay. It might not. You know, depends because of the way I used. Um, I dabbed it on there. I didn't brush it on, so it might not be holding very well. So think about that. So when you go out and spray it. You might have to come back in and do a little bit more. And then again, and then maybe a little bit more after that. Alright, I had one kit where I had to do it a few times before I got the results that I wanted. Alright, and this this is the method that I used. Alright, but the results that you're going to get. Or the results that you're looking for. Is totally up to you. You want to go darker, you go darker. You want to go lighter. And, you know, it's totally up to you. you know, like I said, try to use different lights. 
We can do stuff like this. Okay. Now, to do the stash, I'm going to have to use a smaller brush because this one's a little bit too wide. dry brushing guys it's just very lightly go over that you know Sean did a really nice job you know uh, sculpting the, the stubbles I don't know if you can tell on the camera or not but he sculpted those stubbles in there all right see so he, he did a really good job as far as you know having everything lined up for you what you gotta do is just have to paint on it. I mean, I'm really having a lot of fun with this kit, guys. I, I really love this kit. Yeah. I just hope the, the final product comes out really good. You know, just doing this so far, it's been a lot of fun for me. I hope you guys are having fun too watching. Yeah. Like, just get a try, man. Yeah. He's showing up, man. He's a cool guy. Sure, I'll be happy to cast one for you. Don't be shy to tell him I sent you too, alright? <laughs> Just to let him know. Pause it and see what comes out out of the ceiling, all right? All right. This side looks good. Looks good. Okay. Just a spray over. Okay. I think it looks really good right there. Can I bring it a little closer? pretty good. The light is... There you go. I'm going to cast a shadow right there. This light is getting off the worst light here. Uh, that one right there. Alright, there you go. It doesn't light, it's not bouncing back so much. Alright? So you can tell better. Let's focus on my hand. Alright. 
I'm happy where it's at right now, guys. I'm going to leave that face alone. We're going to hit the chest. All right. So. I'm going to go in with the smaller brush. I don't want to go in with the, the wide one. Maybe from the top, but I'm just trying to see. share the picture with you. I'm using. Okay. Now the idea is you don't want to go with too much. Right? You don't want to make it look too, okay? It's just you want to have some of that skin still show through. All right? So go very gently. Just make sure you get in there in those areas underneath the skin, underneath the shirt a little bit. Darken that up a little bit, okay? It's going to be dark anyway because it's going to cast a shadow. But again, don't overpower it with, uh, with just freaking hair, you know what I mean? when I spray it, it'll melt it down a little bit and blend it in better, okay? So let's go see what happens. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, so there you go, guys. All right. So we're going to leave it here for now. Okay, when I come back, we're going to start doing the clothing. All right, the Hawaiian shirt is going to be a bitch. <laughs> All right, but uh, it, it's going to be a challenge, but, you know, I think I could get it done. And I got some colors for that, I think. The very pastel colors and stuff, so I have some, some stuff that I can use for that. That's going to be a challenge. All right. I don't think the rest of it is not, but... And then the other challenge is going to be the cat for me. Okay, so I want to try to make sure I get Jonesy right, too. All right, but that's where Brett is at right now. I'm really happy where it's coming, where it's going, okay? All right, so that's him right now. He's looking good, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this, this segment of the paint up. All right, he's looking really good, man. I really like it. All right, you can't really tell the five o'clock shadow on this camera see and you can tell on this one this one I got to keep on telling you guys keep an eye on this one mostly that one over there for some moving stuff around and you guys can't see it or different angles or whatever but you know I'm trying to work to make to bring things to you a little bit better so give me a, give me a chance on that I'm trying to improve it got stuff coming in where I'm gonna be moving things around in here all right and uh, I got a crap load of uh, gift cards for Christmas, and that's what I spent my money on. Is uh, I got a few things, better, a little bit better lighting, hopefully, and another table to set things up. 
maybe a little bit better. I'm going to be doing a little rearranging here in the next few days. Um, how much am I going to get this done? I don't know. Uh, I'll try to edit and post the video as far as the skin tone goes. And then, you know, I'll, when I do the paint up on the clothing, that's going to be another part because the whole part of the, uh, what do you call it? Um, skin tone took a long time. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you for coming back and checking things out. Uh, stay tuned for the rest of this. Uh, it'll be out soon. Like I said. Okay. And have a great time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.